Hey everyone, Jolt here. I quickly want to demonstrate to you three powerful new features in Obsidian Xcolidraw 1.9.13. Let's start by creating an empty drawing. And on this drawing, I'm going to paste this YouTube video. When I navigate back to my daily notes page, you will see that this video appears and it can actually be played. So you can create an embedded image that has these components working. You can also add for example, a web page, I'm going to add obsidian.md. And when I navigate back here, then obsidian.md will also be embedded and you can navigate this page. Similarly, if I drag a link here and I just paste this link here, I'm going to enlarge the link so it's easier to see on the embedded image. Now I have an active link here. So if I click on this link shortly, then it is going to open the page for that link. If I click on the link for a long time, so I'm going to click and hold, then it's going to open the actual Excalibur drawing. So this is something you need to get used to, that a quick click, a short click on the link will open the page under the link and a long click on the image, just a long click will open the drawing. So this is how you can navigate either to the drawing if you want to edit your drawing or to the link in the drawing. Now there's one thing that doesn't yet work but I want to show you because I'm assuming that this question will come anyway. So if I embed project C like this as an embedded frame then if I come back here project C's embedded frame is going to be this grayed out box. This is something I plan to implement later on. This will have some performance implications, so this is going to be a separate setting. But just for you to know, at the moment, the markdown embeds don't work. The other embeds do work. This feature is not enabled by default. You need to enable this in plugin settings. I didn't enable this because you might not like to have interactive embedded pages because then if you accidentally click on it, it navigates and, and you might not like it. So you need to go to Excolidraw plugin settings and you need to scroll down all the way to embed and export. And here you can see I have three options for embedding images. They all have their pros and cons. I tried to explain the pros and cons here. Until now we had SVG image and PNG image and now we have native SVG. So I'm going to switch back to SVG image which is the default setting for Excolidraw Obsidian. And when I do that, at first nothing happens. I need to close and open the page for the images to be updated. So I'm going to navigate to Project C and come back. And now you can see that this is the legacy approach. So here I cannot click on the link and all the embeds are with placeholders. And then if I come back to plugin settings and again I scroll down to embed and export and I select here native SVG, then with the native SVG again I need to navigate back and forth and with the navigation now I have the active document embedded. So that was the first thing I wanted to show you. The second feature involves executing templater scripts in embedded markdown documents within Excolidraw. For this, to demonstrate this, I'm going to open today's daily note in Excolid Brain and I'm going to zoom into this document and I'm going to zoom in to the hobby and home section so you can better see what I'm doing. I have a templater script which is part of my daily notes workflow that creates a daily note in a project note on, or in a person note. I'm going to show you a video that talks about the logic and the workflow behind this templater script. Now the focus is not the GTD workflow but how you can execute the templater script. So I'm now going to open the templater insert template model. So this is the Alt or Option E on your keyboard. 
if you're using default templator settings and I'm just going to choose my meeting note template. And when I execute this, then what you will see is that the templator script was executed. I was navigated here on the left hand side to project K and I have my notes here so I can add this is my note for the meeting and let's say here are some actions like this. So I can create this note and what you can notice is of course Excali draw with the embedded note was updated as well as I was able to execute the script itself. Now, if you're interested in learning more about my GTD workflow, I have a video. I'm going to include a link in the video description. This is the video. It talks about this meeting notes script and my workflow behind it. So I recommend that you watch this if you're interested. The final example I want to show you or final feature I want to show you. I'm going to open this drawing again involves anchoring images with a fixed size. So I'm just going to clean this up a little like this. I'm, I'm going to leave this here in the corner because I'm going to be referencing this in a second. I'm going to use insert any file from vault to insert an excolateral drawing into my drawing right here. I'm going to choose the end queen. This is a drawing from my book on a page summary for emergence. And I'm going to click this button here to anchor the image to 100% of its original size. This is super useful when you're deconstructing an image into parts and you want to put this together, but you want to make sure that when you put all the pieces together, then font sizes and image sizes all match nicely. And I'm going to click insert as image. When I do this, the inserted image, you will not be able to resize it. So this is logged. And of course, as I mentioned, the benefit is that this text size is equal. The point I want to show you is with this, I can anchor the embedded image that if I change it, still the text sizes are going to match, which is super powerful. If you don't want this image to be anchored, Right now, the only way to unanchor it or to remove the anchor is open this as a markdown document and you can come here and you can delete the anchor from here. And then when you come back to the drawing, then now this image can be resized, but then all the benefits of anchoring are gone. Now, I want to include here just another video for reference, and then I want to show you something. So. I have a deconstruct script, so this anchoring is also very helpful and useful when you're using the deconstruct visual idea script and you're implementing something like this as I do in this video about visually connecting ideas. So let's imagine I have this drawing right here and I have this illustration that I want to reuse in other drawings, but I want to reuse it in a way that I'm linking the documents together. I'm not just adding it to the stencil library because of course I could add this image to the stencil library and reuse it like that. But then I lose the connectivity aspect. So what I can do is I can select the part of the image that I want to carve out. I want to deconstruct and I can choose this pizza slice here. This is the icon for the deconstruct selected elements into a new image script. And when I click this, it will ask me for a name. I'm going to call this demo 11 and I'm just going to click yes. And what happens is this image was now replaced by an image and this is where I can edit the image. So for example, if now I add a diamond here to the corner and when I come back of course this image is going to be updated with the diamond as well. Again the feature I want to show you is of course because this is a deconstructed part of an image this is going to be anchored so with this 
you will no longer be able to change the size unless of course you go to open this as a markdown document and you remove the 100% anchor from the end of this link and if I do that then I can resize the image if I want to but typically in this setup when you're deconstructing elements from a drawing into a separate drawing so you can reuse it elsewhere then you want the image to have a consistent size and the new feature the third new feature in the latest version of Excolid Draw is this locking of elements so there you have it these are the three new features I can imagine that there are still going to be some early problems with both the native SVG embeds as well as with the templator scripts if you run into issues let me know in the comments let me know on github and let's work together to resolve those based on my testing and i've been using these for a couple of days now these features work stable so i'm happy to release them but of course i cannot test everything there can be issues so i welcome your feedback thank you